Hi, in this tutorial we're going to learn how to adjust numbers, dollar amounts, uh, for inflation. We're all familiar with inflation, the way that prices increase over time. And in finance it's important to know how to adjust for inflation when we're trying to figure out how much we've saved. Because we may be saving money at a great rate, but we'll have a lot of money in the future, but prices will have gone up. So we need to see what that's going to feel like in real, in real terms. We're going to start with a simple example of a gym membership that we have. It costs $25 per month, but every year it goes up by 2.5% in nominal terms. So we want to know what the real price of this gym membership will be in five years if the inflation rate is 3% per year. So we'll start with our value drivers. Our annual membership dues are going to be equal to our monthly dues multiplied by 12. So right now, this year, we're going to pay our gym $300 throughout the course of this year. But next year, we're going to pay them 2.5% more. Well, if inflation is 3% per year, what that increase in our membership dues feels like is not going to be the same as it actually is. So we're going to do this in three steps, and then I'm going to show you a simplified way to do it. It's different than the process outlined in the book, because in the book, they're giving us CPI data, the CPI level in one year compared to another, and we use that to calculate the cumulative inflation rate. Sometimes we just hear things like, the inflation rate has averaged 3.7% you know, over the last certain amount of years, and so we've got to use these averages. We don't have this data, so we can plug it in using this formula if you don't have CPI data. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate our nominal membership fee. That's how much we're actually going to pay to the gym. So this year, we're going to pay them $300, right? Next year, we're going to pay them $300 multiplied by 1 plus 2.5%. raised to the first power. And if we give all of these absolute references, it's going to make it a lot easier. I can right click and see that in the year of end, at the end of year five, we're going to be paying the gym $339 per, per year. And it seems like an increase, but whether or not it's going to feel like an increase at the time depends on how much other prices around us have increased. And so to figure that out, the cumulative inflation rate, how much other prices will have gone up, we're going to use the same formula that we used for calculating the compound rate of interest. So to do that, we say that our cumulative inflation rate is going to be equal to 1 plus our inflation rate raised to the power of our year minus 1. We want that inflation rate to stay the same year after year, so we give it an absolute reference. You know, this year we're paid $300. It's going to feel like $300, right? So the inflation rate is zero. But as we go forward, next year things are going to be 3% more expensive. The year after, they will have gone up 3% one year, then we're going to add 3% to that. So we can't just add 3%, 3 plus 3 plus 3, because prices that have already gone up are going to continue to go up. So things are actually going to be more expensive due to compounding. In real terms, what we're going to pay is going to be equal to our nominal membership fee divided by 1 plus the cumulative inflation rate. And as that cumulative inflation rate goes up, what we're really paying goes down. So in year two, because our membership went up 2.5%, but prices all around us went up by 3%, it feels like the price actually went down. And because over this period of five years, the inflation rate, the rate of change of prices around us, is greater than the increase in our membership dues, it's actually going to feel like our membership has gotten expensive, despite gotten less expensive, despite the fact that in nominal terms, the price of our membership fee has increased. We can do this in an easier way if you don't want to create the chart. You can do it by first calculating the nominal future membership fee. What that is, is a quick jump start to get to this fifth period. So we say that it's equal to $300, because that's what it started with, but we use the compound interest formula. It's going to be 1 plus 2.5% raised to the fifth power higher, right? $339. And then we can say that in real terms, that's going to feel like 
1 plus the inflation rate raised to the fifth power. It's going to feel like $293. So I'm going to show you those two formulas. In cell B21 for the nominal future membership fee, I have my annual membership dues multiplied by 1 plus my annual increase raised to the number of years that I'm going to be increasing. And in real terms, we're going to take that nominal future membership fee of $339 and we're going to divide it by 1 plus the annual inflation rate raised to the number of years. And so we can actually get to the same result that we are going to be, in nominal terms, spending $339. However, because inflation was not, I'm sorry, because inflation outstripped the increase in prices, it's going to feel like less than it did even now, despite the increase in, in um, the price of the membership fee. All right, I hope that helps you tackle some of the homework problems. And if you have any questions or need more clarification, feel free to drop me an email.